Hi, so hi everyone. Um, I just wanted to say thank the cycling campaign for inviting us along to talk today. And it's also nice to have the graveyard presentation. So. <laughs> um, but hopefully I'll be very quick. It's uh, kind of a, some more of a summary about what the work we do. Um, so we are green schools and for our European visitors, it's eco schools um, internationally. Uh, it's an international uh, programme run by FEE, which is the Foundation of Environmental Education, and it operates in over uh, about 58 countries, um, and there's over 25,000 schools involved in the programme. Uh, Ireland is considered the world leader um, in the Green Schools programme. Uh, we have over 80% of schools registered in the programme, both primary and secondary, and we have over 90% of schools that get a green flag. Um, that's the only incentive for them, they just get a green flag at the end of their, their two-year programme. So it's a thematic and the first theme that they commence on is litter and waste. And then once they get a green flag for that, then they move on to energy, water, travel and biodiversity. Um, and the beauty of the programme is that once you progress on to another theme, you still have to keep the previous theme <coughs> taken over in order to get your green flag. Um, it's a seven-step programme. so. The first one would be they set up a Green Schools Committee that is going to run the programme in the school and it's a student-led programme as well so the, the, the committees are predominantly children and then there's a coordinator who's a teacher or a parent in the school. Uh, they undertake an environmental review so for travel that would be a travel survey on how kids are coming to school. Um, which we go into the school and do for them. Uh, then from their travel survey, they'll set up an action plan and then they'll monitor and evaluate their action plan. Uh, they'll link it into the curriculum and they'll have a, um, like an action day where they have kind of a, one big event to kind of uh, complement what, what activities are doing. And then they also need to come up with a green code um, that links with the programme. So quite often uh, it's uh, don't be a fool, cycle to school, or um, be cool, cycle to school, something like that there. Uh, so why do we have uh, travel as a green school theme? Well, it's um, pretty obvious for a lot of us. Uh, the numbers of children walking and cycling to school has declined uh, considerably um, over the years. Uh, it's an environmental reasons as well, so to reduce our CO2 emissions, uh, health to get more active and fit, and uh, then safety as well, so we kind of link in um, the safe cross code or uh, I suppose um, like people parking dangerously or irresponsible driving around schools as well. So this is our uh, aim and it's to encourage not just children but parents and, and adults as well or teachers in the school. Uh, Perceived and real barriers to cycling, as we all know, uh, in Ireland particularly, is weather, um, safety and image. Uh, and we would go into schools and we would talk to the children about these issues. And we'd also talk to the parents. And um, a lot of parents would be, as mentioned in previous presentations, cycling is dangerous. And we witness them then putting their children into a car without a seatbelt. So, um, image is, a big issue, somebody mentioned it earlier about the school uniform uh, and some schools we've worked with where the girls do have to wear long skirts or short skirts, uh, they work with the principal and they're allowed to wear their jogging bottoms to cycle to school and then they must change into their skirt when they get there. Uh, so we're, as part of our programme, we're helping to change the way people think about cycling and um, children, parents and teachers. So what we do, we have a, a dedicated network of staff based all over the country who actively work with schools. Uh, they listen to their fears and understand their issues. And we also encourage students, teachers and parents to address these issues collectively. Um, and then they implement cycling as part of their seven steps. So what that means is we look at ways that cycling can be incorporated into the curriculum. So for secondary schools who might use a bicycle as an example to learn about uh, friction or you might use a bicycle as a way to sort of monitor your heart rate for biology. 
Uh, and then they would do kind of things like stories about the bicycle, history of the bicycle, art competitions, model making, things like that there. Uh, so we do uh, workshops and this one on the left is one that we worked with with secondary school called Beauty and the Bike. And it was taken from um, Sustrans in the UK. And we linked up with the body shop, which is kind of, uh, I suppose, like an eco-friendly, ethical um, beauty shop. And what we did is they went in and they uh, talked to girls about looking after their skin while they're on their bike and how to look good. And then we also did uh, workshops on so why do you not cycle um, and then getting them to address these issues as to uh, how they can be overcome. Um, sadly, the thing about beauty in the bike, it didn't really work because the girls were kind of more interested in getting the free beauty samples than actually learning to get on the bike. Um, the one on the right is uh, part of an initiative that we do a Cycle on Wednesday, so it's uh, abbreviated to cow, and these are the kids that have made cow mask um, to cycle to school with them on. Uh, we do workshops on bicycle maintenance, so we go in and we teach uh, children how to fix punctures, um, how to maintain their bike, how to look after it, because quite often uh, in our surveys, we ask children if they have a bike. They say, 90% say we have a bike. And then we ask them, do you use your bike outside of school? And about 50, 60% of them use their bike outside of school. And the rest were like, my bike's broken. It doesn't work. Uh, and really, what was just wrong with the bike was it just needed air in the tires or something simple like up there. Um, we also uh, have part funding for cycle training. Um, and we encourage schools to undertake cycle training, all, like all primary schools in particular. Um, sadly, in Ireland, we don't have a national standard at the moment, but I do know that it's in progress. And we really need a national standard similar to the UK to kind of push schools to undertake cycle training, undertake them at a younger age and preferably when they're in sixth class before they go to secondary, that they've done some sort of on-road training. Because a lot of the training um, operated in Ireland at the moment is unregulated, it's on the playground, it's uh, a trainer coming in and maybe taking 30, 40 kids on a, on a playground and instructing them, which is it's just no good. And we have some training companies that will go in and it'll do a four hour session in one day and that'll be it which isn't, it's, it's not gonna work. It needs to be consistent over a six, eight week period. Um, so that's one thing that we uh, work with schools on. We do encourage them to, to undertake training at a younger age, which some of them do. Because if, they, if you part fund them for sixth class in their first year of the program, they've gone to secondary school, so they've lost, they've lost that's money for their school that's kind of been, well, not wasted, but it's not gonna have in, an impact. Um, we also have uh, grants to provide cycle parking in schools um, and what they do is if they need to fill in an application and it's quite a rigorous um, application they need to demonstrate that they're committed to promoting cycling and they'll do this by um, filling in or giving examples of their action plan so it'll be to have cycle to school days to undertake cycle training to have bike maintenance to have maybe a safety talk um, and then we also, once they get the cycle parking, we also monitor and evaluate it. We get cycle parking here, so it's about 50 spaces in the left, and it's oversubscribed. And um, when we first, uh, we do a first kind of check, <coughs> and the occupancy rates were like 50, 60%. And by the time they do their third one, it's over 90% of the bike shed being used, which is great to see. Uh, we also get them to, launch their cycle parking so they'll invite somebody uh, like a celebrity from the local area or a politician or something like that there just to kind of get a bit of publicity for the school the cycling is happening in, in that area uh, as well. Cycle to school days as we mentioned and um, we have some brave parents that actually get dressed up as cows <laughs> just as a bit of fun a fun exercise. Um, and then these next photos are just kind of, I suppose, just a collective of all the things that we do in schools. Um, the top left is an all-girls secondary school in South Dublin. 
Um, and they had nobody cycled to school. They were all taken to school in SUVs, um, or they drove themselves to school. Uh, by the time they had finished the program, this is the bottom right, 6% uh, of the girls were cycling to school. So it's almost six times the national average for girls that age. Uh, we take them on cycle trips around our locality because that's the area they're going to be cycling in to get to school. Uh, we do cycle audits with them as well. So we, they look at maybe infrastructure, or things that could be improved from their perspective. So we don't try to influence them in any way. We just get their, their feedback. Um, cycle parking being launched in, on the bottom left. Cycle trips, so we go to like local parks as part of Bike Week. Uh, schools are eligible to apply for funding from their local authority. With uh, each local authority in the country has roughly a 5,000 euro budget to spend on Bike Week activities, um, which might be seen as quite low, but at least it's something. And schools are eligible to apply for this if they want to run an event. So a lot of them will have bicycle uh, breakfast, so they'll, get, um, they'll buy a breakfast or they might get a sponsored. Uh, we went to, out with a school in Roundwood in County Wicklow and we took them mountain biking for the day. So we took 60 kids mountain biking, which was um, great fun, and there was only one or two um, accidents. So. <laughs> uh, we do like bicycle activities, like bicycle games, bicycle relays, where we uh, get them to put into practice what they've learned in their cycle training. So it's not all about speed, but it's about control, using their gears properly, um, weaving through cones, going through narrow cones, stopping in a box, stopping properly, dismounting properly, things like that. Uh, just more kind of cycle trips and cycle to school days. And just as part of um, Bike Week, we, Bike Week falls in June and our secondary schools finish in May. So we really need to have some sort of event to cater for them. Um, and as part of the Green Schools program we have in November, we have a World Day of Action. So we're hoping to kind of push that for um, some bicycle related activities for secondary schools. Uh, but with the primary schools that take part, um, over 20% of them cycle. So we have over <coughs> maybe six, seven, eight <coughs> kids cycling to school on National Cycle to School Day. And the photo in the middle is from this year's Cycle to School Day in Buddha's town. So over 100 kids had their bikes to school, which is 50% of the school population. Uh, these are the kids mountain biking, and then the top one is a smoothie bike where they learn about um, energy, how, to, how you can use the energy from the bicycle. Um, so it kind of focuses on the food that we eat and then using that energy effectively. So they power light bulbs with it, and they power uh, hi-fi systems, MP3 players, and then at the end they uh, make a smoothie and they all have like a healthy drink. Um, this in turn will hopefully lead to more girls on bikes. We do find that at primary school, um, over the course of the two years, there's generally more boys will cycle, but it's quite high with the girls as well. Um, when we ask them how they would like to get to school, the girls want to cycle. It's what they want to do, more so than the boys. Um, but what we're doing is we're losing this when it goes to secondary school. So we're hoping that the more the program lasts, the longer it continues, those girls will eventually go to secondary school and they will begin to cycle. We do see it visually. Um, we also have, just this is the last slide, um, the issue with uh, parents or women on bikes. Uh, we have a course called Getting Gear and we go to the school, get the parents to come along and we take them out on their bikes and we put them through kind of similar to the bike relay that the kids are doing. And then we take them out onto the road, cycle around, um, because that's the road they're going to be cycling with their kids. And then these ladies here decided to bling their bikes when they came to school. So they're all kind of dressed up. So it's just a bit more fun and um, things like that. So 
hopefully, uh, if you want any more further information, you can just give us a call. Okay.